What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today we're going to make something like this. USA. Huh. Round one. Fight. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And before you get started, if you want to follow along with my exact project files like I'm using Ken from Street Fighter, make sure you get onto the description below where I have a link to my channel and I have all the assets and templates that I'm going to be using within this tutorial here. But also, if you want to make it completely from scratch, I'm going to walk you through all the steps right now. First step we're going to be using is this popular software called Mixamo. It's all browser based. It's completely free. And what it does is takes any humanoid character, it brings it, it weights it, it skins it to a skeletal system. And then from there, we can use some of the preset animations to animate our characters and then bring it to Unreal Engine 5. And I'm going to show you how we can combine a bunch of different motion capture animations together to make a full sequence. And so first you want to go to www.mixamo.com as you see right here. So I would come down here to browse characters. And like I said before, I'm using Ken from Street Fighter 4, but feel free to use any character that you want. We have some characters already built in here. Or if you want to use your own character and have it auto rig, you would come right here to where it says upload character. You would click on this and then all you need is an OBJ or an FBX. And so I'm going to actually walk you through the steps right now. So I'm going to take the FBX of Ken. I'm just going to drag and drop them right into here and then wait for this all to upload. And once your character is uploaded, it's going to say auto rigger orientation. And you just want to make sure your character is front facing like so. And then you're going to click on next. And then here, you're going to place the place markers where they should go. So the chin, you want to put this marker right on the chin. For the wrist, you want to make sure these markers are on the wrist. And everything is symmetrical. So what I'm doing on the left is also happening on the right as well. You're going to place the marker for where the elbows would be. Where the knees are going to be. And then your groin area in which i believe will be right there and you also have a chart to show you where to place everything as well and then once you're happy with how everything is you just come down here and click next and now it's going to auto rig a character for us and once your character is done auto rigging it's going to have this review sample up right here it's just going to show your character moving around like so make sure that everything is jointed up correctly in which it looks like everything is good here so now i'm going to hit next on here then I'm going to hit next again just to proceed. And now you can see we have our character down here inside of our viewport. Now in the top left hand corner right beside characters we have animation. So I'm going to click on this and you can see we have a whole plethora of different animations to choose from. So if I click on jump down now you can see our character is actually jumping down. So to get my animations set up first thing I'm going to do is come up here to search. I'm going to hit T and hit enter. And that's going to come up with T pose right here. Now I'm going to click on this and I want to save this out individually. Now the reason that I do this is because inside of Unreal Engine 5, I'm going to bring in the T-Pose character with no animations at all. And then I'm going to bring in each animation after that separately and it's all going to perfectly combine to our character. And so once you're ready, you're just going to click on download. Inside our download settings, I'm just going to click 60 FPS just to keep everything consistent. I'm going to do binary FBX right there with the skin. That's important. You want to have the mesh on your skeletal system. And then I'm going to click on download. And then from there, you should have your character download in the T pose. Now, these next sets of animation is going to be completely up to you. I already have some downloaded, in which again, I have them inside the link down in the description. But if you wanted to make your own animation, I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So when I come back over here to search, I'm actually going to cross this out where the T is. And then I'm just going to come over here. And I'm going to hit boxing. And now you can see we have a bunch of boxing movements. And so I think the first one that I picked down here was just like an idle stance, which we have right here. So you can see our character is just kind of bouncing around in this idle stance. You have controllers over here where you can actually put them in hyperdrive. You can slow them down a little bit if you want to. You can make the arms a little bit wider if you want to. So it's cool how we have some controls down here. We also, I'm going to be using a walk cycle here as well. So come down here, maybe come down and look for a regular walk, which we have right here. And then we have several different ways we could go about this. So right now you can see our character is just walking forward in space in which I want. But another option is to have it just walking in place. 
and you have a complete walk cycle just walking directly where it's going to be just at absolute zero but for this particular tutorial i want to show you guys how we can have a walk cycle and actually splice everything together to keep them moving forward without using any keyframe at all so i'm going to click off it in place and i'm just going to keep having them walk forward so once you're happy with your walk cycle you can hit download in which i already have this one downloaded and then another one that we have is the hurricane kick which for anybody that's ever played street fighter they should be very familiar with this right here so again we have a bunch of attributes over here that you can control but basically what i did was i downloaded a bunch of these different animations and now we're going to put them together inside of unreal engine 5. So once you're happy with your character animations, you got your T-Pose and everything, the next step from here is to create a blank slate inside of Unreal Engine 5, which I showed you how to do in previous chapters. Or if you want, you can actually use my template in which I made. I already have a background set up. I have the lighting already set up with the HDR. So all we have to do is bring our character in and worry about the animations. And just in case you guys were interested in the ones that I ended up downloading, I have the fight idol stance, I have the hurricane kick, I have a bowing animation, standard walk. I have the stop walking. So basically he walks and then he stops. And then I have the T-pose. So these are the five animations that I'm going to be working with. Plus the T-pose right here. Again, I have this inside of my store. Absolutely free to download. So let's continue on to Unreal Engine 5. Now, if you want to use my project file, all you have to do is unzip the folder. And then this is what the format's going to look like. And so we're going to have this blue symbol with the Unreal Engine U inside of it. It's going to say day five. And all you have to do is basically double click this. And this is going to open up my exact project file in which I made the template for you guys to work with. But again, this is not necessary. You're free to make it completely from scratch if you want to, including using your own characters. And once we have Unreal Engine 5 opened up, this is what I'm working with right here. And so I have a basic background with a grid pattern on here that I made. And then if I look in my skylight, I'm actually using one of these basic HDRs and everything just to properly like this scene and everything evenly. And then from here, actually, let me just make an FX folder. So I'm making a new folder. I'm going to name it FX. Come down here and just drag and drop everything in here. Then I'm going to make another folder and I'm going to name this one character. Okay, this is where I'm going to put my T-Pose character in. And then down here, let me actually save all. There we go. So down here, you can see I have a folder already named character. So I'm going to double click on this one. And then from here, I'm going to drag and drop my T-Pose FBX in this blank area right here. So let me actually drag my folder in here. And you can see the one that we have that says T-Pose. So I'm going to left click, drag it down into Unreal Engine 5. Then I'm going to click right here where we have the FBX import options. I'm going to leave everything as is. I'm not going to click anything on here. I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and hit import all. And then I'm going to get rid of the message log like so. And now if we look inside of our folder here, you can see we have all the textures that came over from my character. We have the skeletal system. We have the physics assets, and then we have this one right here that's highlighted in pink, which is our mesh. So I'm going to left click and just drag them into the scene. And then under here, under my details panel, I'm just going to zero out the location like so. And then I'm going to drag them into the folder here instead of my outliner. And if I double click on them, that's going to bring us in center, just kind of focus in on him here. And now we could look all around and everything looks good. So he's completely flat with the ground and everything. And the next step from here is we're going to actually bring in some of those animations. So I'm going to completely select all the different FBXs and I'm going to drag them all in the Unreal Engine at once. And that way we don't have to do it individually on the import option screen. So if I come back down here to File Explorer, you can see now I have all my animations here. So I'm going to just select one of them. I'm going to hold down the shift key, left click, and I'm going to select all of them here. I don't need a T-Pose because I already have it in there. So I'm just going to left click and drag all five animations into my browser down here. And now you can see we have the FBX import options right here under skeleton. Usually we'll have the T-Pose in there. If it doesn't, you want to make sure that you use your T-Pose skeleton like so. So the next thing you want to make sure you click is the import animations, in which I'm going to left click on this. I'm going to leave it for exported time and that's everything right there. So I'm going to click import all and it's going to bring all of our animations down into our folder down here in the content browser. So again, I want to get rid of the message log like so. So now you can see we have more items down here, but we're not going to miss with the content browser anymore. What we're going to do is we're going to make an ad level sequence so that we have a timeline to work with. 
So I'm going to right click, make a new folder for sequence. Like so, double click. And then we're just going to name this one Street Fighter for my sequence here and click on save. And there we go. So now you see we have our timeline down here at 30 FPS. I'm going to change this one to 60 because for all my animations that I downloaded from Mixamo, I did them all at 60 FPS. And then from here, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to make a new folder just for this clipboard here. I'm just going to name this one Sequencer as well. All about being organized here instead of our world outliner. So there we go. And then right here where we have T-Pose under our character folder, I'm just going to left click and drag that into my sequencer, which is my timeline down here. I'm going to click on save. And this is where we're going to do all the animation blending. So right here under T-Pose where we have animation, I can start by clicking this and now we see all of our animations in here. So we have the fight idol, we have the hurricane kick. What I want to do is I want to start with the standard walk animation. And if I click on play, now you can see our character is moving within our scene. If I click forward, like so. And so the main thing is we can actually just use this timeline right here and just keep adding our animations in here. So if I bring it all the way to the end, which is that point 141, come back over here to animation again. And let's say I want to do the standard walk animation. And I'm just going to make sure that these are aligned right. So it looks like I have a little gap in here. Just going to left click, snap it over like so. But if I play this through, you can see that it goes all the way back to the beginning again. So let me play that one more time. See, he's walking and then it snaps all the way back. Now, the cool thing about this is I can actually fix this so he continues walking on. And the way I want to go about that is I want to first add the skeleton so that we can see it inside the viewport. And that way we can align our skeletons. So at that perfect point, he's going to keep moving forward from that point on. If that's a little bit confusing, let me show you guys how to do it right now. So down here where we have our standard walk, the first animation, I'm just going to come over here and right click. And then we have this option right here under display that says show skeleton. So now you can see we have the skeleton moving within our mesh and we have a visual representation of what's going on. So I want to do the same thing for this animation as well, because as you can see, as soon as this animation ended, our skeleton just stops right there. So if I right click on this animation, show skeleton, now we have a green one pop up and that's kind of showing you what's going on. So we have the pink one moving, stops, and then it moves over to the green one right there in which we want to align this green one with this pink one right here. So if I right click on this animation, then come over here to properties, it's going to engulf our entire window. And this is where having dual monitors could really help out or even like a widescreen monitor. But to make it a little bit more visible, we have these arrows right here. So if I click on section, we're going to click that up. Same thing with animation. And the one that we want to focus on is this one right here where it says root motions. Now where it says location start offset, if I move this middle one right here where we have the Y, you can see that we're actually moving our skeleton up to where the other one was right there in which we kind of want to go maybe to the beginning of the green animation here. That will be our second walk cycle. And I'm going to go through that again, come over to properties and I want to align it with the pink one like so. Now it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but looks like around 380 is going to be a good area for us. And if I come over here where it says maximize or restore the viewport, if I click on that, that's going to bring us into the quad viewport. And if I just use my mouse wheel, scroll back. And if I hold the alt and right click, I can actually move this over a little bit. And this will be a little bit easier for us to see what's going on if we lined up our skeleton or not. But let me actually just play through this again. I'm actually going to come down here, make this full screen. See, there you go. Now you can see we have a character walking all the way through and that's how we can combine the animation to keep moving. Now for this next part, I want to have the walk cycle keep going, but then I want to use the one where he's walking and then he stops and goes into the idle pose. So let me show you how we can actually do some blending in here because this isn't going to be a part of the walk cycle. This is a completely different animation that we're going to blend together. So if I come back down here into my sequencer, Let's make this a little bit longer so we have a little bit more room down here. So I just left clicked on these numbers right here and I'm just dragging over to the right. Then I'm going to take my endpoint and move this over. Then I'm just going to scroll forward here a little bit and actually let me click save. Always good to save. So what I want to do here is come back over here to animation where we have the plus symbol, left click, 
and right here where it says stop walking animation i want to add this one in here as well so if i play this through you can kind of see what's going on let me actually double click just to bring in closer to him and then we're going to scroll this back a little bit let me click on play so you can see what's going on he walks and then he stops and that's exactly what we want to have going on so as you can see we have our character walking and he's going to keep walking into this distance right here and then this is where we want to start blending it so that he stops after he's done walking so the main thing is you kind of want to try to figure out a point to where the walk cycle is going to blend correctly so if i look at his right foot right there actually his left foot right there is in the upward position and if i come back over here let me see if i can find a good spot to where the left foot is in that same position which would be about 255 if i'm looking down here in my timeline so let me actually scroll this over and if you look down here let me actually make this a little bit smaller so we can see it or actually zoom into it so if i come over here instead of my timeline there we go you can actually see we have like these curves in here that is actually our blend mark so if i scroll through here you can see he's doing like this electric slide and that's because we have to move our skeletal system but this is actually blending those two animations together in which let me actually come down here into my stop walk animation right click show skeleton so we can kind of see what's going on here so let me actually come up into my backspin there we go so that one is actually blue so that's going to be for the stop animation this one right here so what i'm going to want to do is actually let me move this over like so then i'm going to right click come over to properties and i'm going to move the y offset all the way over until he's kind of aligned with this green one right here there you go so you can see that this is where it's starting to blend a little bit and let's look back instead of our regular viewport and our perspective viewport to see how this is blending again this could be kind of tedious depending on how accurate you want it to be there we go so for right now i think that's going to be good enough but you guys can see the power of blending these animations together and if i actually come down here and you right click we actually have some properties down here in which we could do like easing so if you want to do like easy ease in or if you want to do like exponential ease out you have those properties there as well so like i said you can actually go in there and just really finite this blend if you wanted to but let's move on with the rest of the animation here so we're going to have him stop and then he's going to go into his idle pose like right about there so let me actually make this a little bit longer again so we can see more of our timeline down here then we're going to take my endpoint right here and move this all the way out and then i'm going to add let's see which one we have we have so yeah let's go with this one right here where he's actually going to bow so let's see if i can actually just have it snap instead of blending there so it looks like he stops right there and actually probably want to have it blend in there too so let's go back to our other viewport here which we have on the back and let's see what it looks like when he's blending or when he's bowing so i'm going to right click properties i'm going to move this yellow skeleton over to match this blue one right here and then let me come back down here to my perspective view and see what's going on so i can probably even have it blend a little bit better because it looks like he just snaps into it so there we go that's looking pretty nice right there and then he's going to take a bow like so and then i think for the last part i'm just going to show him going into his fight stance because again hopefully you guys are following along and making up your own animations on here which i can't wait to see what everybody does there make sure you tag me on your social medias but let me actually save everything here all right so i'm all done with the saving so i think he bows twice let me see no he only bows once and then he goes back up so this would be a good blending point to have our, our fight stance so i'm gonna come back here animation do fight idle animation again i'm just going to drag it so it blends after he does his other bow i'm going to show skeleton in which we can see it's like this turquoise skeleton right now so let's see what happens so right here where it says fighting idle animation i'm going to right click come over to properties and i'm just going to move it over 
let me see yeah there we go so something like that bam so that's looking pretty good right there so let me actually just play this through so i'm going to right click where it says show skeleton i'm going to turn those all off so we can kind of just get a sense of what's going on for our animation here let me click play see we see him walking up he continues to walk up he starts to raise his shoulders stops he's going to give us a formal bow right here and then immediately move into the fight stance like so and since we're almost done there let's actually just add the hurricane kick in here as well so i'm going to move this over like so and i'm going to come back down here in the animation and i'm going to click on hurricane kick and i'm just going to scroll this in here so that we have a good blend happening right there so i'm going to show scale actually i don't need to show the skeleton let me see where my guy's standing so he's standing right here and i'm going to actually show skeleton on both of these just to kind of see where my skeleton is and let me come back over here to this viewport so it looks like my hurricane kick is starting up there it's a little bit forward so i'm going to right click properties I'm actually going to move this one back into the negative so that it all lines up. So there we go. He's in the fight stance. And then he starts blending into the hurricane kick in which this is where you could do like a lot of finite maneuvering down here instead of your blend. But for this tutorial, I think we're just going to rock with that. So I'm going to turn off the skeletons on both of these. Bring my end point to the end of the hurricane kick. Let's move all the way to the beginning like this so he's coming towards us and let's go and play this through so i'm going to click on play we see him walking forward towards us he's going to start to slow down stop he's going to give us the bow right here as we have inside of our timeline then he's going to transition into his fight animation which he's going to bounce around for a little bit there and then he's going to transition right into the hurricane kick like so and bam so thank you guys for finishing day five and it's not going to stop here so make sure you guys save the playlist over here because i'm going to be continuously adding to this course and so you want to make sure that you save it because you never know when i'm going to add another day to unroll engine five in five days so until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you in the next video make sure you save that playlist i'll see you soon take care